What is going on YouTube? Welcome to the show. So Intel's new Coffee Lake processor, the 8700K, is out. Pretty much the reviews are very good. Uh, if I were to give it a one-line summary of it, I would say the 8700K performs great for gaming and will perform just as well, if not better, than the similar product in its class and even reaching close to a workstation grade CPU. But in this video, I'm not talking about the 8700K's performance and stroke Intel's ego. Intel should be called out on their business practices. It just seems like Intel could get away with murder. Now by the way, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I talk a lot about technology and a lot about CPU and GPU related news. So hit that subscribe and enjoy the channel. Thank you. Now, it wasn't long ago that Intel unveiled its professional workstation CPU, the 6900K, and the enthusiast level CPU, the 6950X. One was an 8 core 16 thread, the other was a 10 core 20 thread. The 6900K was $1,000, while the 6950X was $1,600. It was the best of the best in terms of what pro consumers can get before getting into Xeon level CPUs. The tech press and fans alike drooled and praised Intel for bringing server level advancement to the masses. Since those release, Intel had its way for a few years, releasing the i3, the i5, and the i7. Uh, the 7700K is the most recent release of a you know high performance um, you know mass consumer uh, that is affordable, four cores, uh, you know eight thread CPU. Then came Ryzen. AMD did something that Intel was not expecting, and even the world was not expecting. AMD showed the world that 8 core 16 thread is affordable. In fact, to really get the most bang for the buck, the 1700 and the 1700X both offer 8 cores 16 thread for under $300. AMD thought that they had won the tech press back. For the most part, they did, but for some, it was not good enough. Those reviewers finally showed their true colors by lampooning Ryzen for not having good game performance, even while Ryzen's performance performed very well in gaming and best in class in workstation level performance. AMD, unfazed by some of the gaming criticism, unveiled its highest end desktop CPU line, Threadripper. Threadripper was a game changer. First, it showed the world that high performance 16 core CPU can be affordable. And the second one is the most important and without saying it outright, but it showed the world Intel has been price gouging its customer all these years. So left scrambling, Intel sought to respond to AMD's new crown as the performance leader. The first response from Intel was the infamous marking slide that says Ryzen is nothing more than Zen cores that are glued together. Intel clearly beaten and surprised they would have to resort to slights to hurt Ryzen. The second response was more professional and more substantial. They unveiled a lineup of core i9s with the top CPU capping out at 18 core 36 thread. But in Intel fashion, if you wanted the most PCIe lanes or the most options, then you would have to buy the higher end tier. And if you wanted more cores and the best performance, you would have to pay $2,000 for that privilege. To even get close to the same price as the $1,000 Threadripper Intel's core i9, in that price range has only 10 cores and a lot fewer PCIe lanes. This is where we are today. The 8700K is out and performance is good. There's no denying that. The tech press and YouTubers with early access loves it. Some even went so far as to rationalize the excuse to why Intel would require a new motherboard to use the new 87K CPU. It was amazing to watch as these unbiased reviewers provided cover for Intel. It was shocking. That is what I want to talk to you guys about is my frustration with some of the online tech press and the, the YouTubers. Intel has proven to violate monopoly laws here in the states and overseas specifically in the EU. Uh, tactics like paying off distributors not to sell AMD products or provide large financial incentives to uh, OEMs like Dell and HP to push Intel part over the better performing AMD part. Does the name AMD Opteron ring a bell to you guys? Maybe I'll do a video on that at some uh, point in time. This was a fascinating case where AMD's Opteron was the better performing CPU, but because Intel was so big, dominant, and rich, they paid off uh, distributors and OEMs. The effect of that still hounds AMD to this day. Just look at both companies' market share and you'll see what I mean. 
Many of these reviewers say that the reviews are unbiased and that Intel doesn't control their content. I think for the most part that is true. I think that there's no malicious intent by these reviewers to, uh, you know, I guess lie or uh, say something untrue. Uh, so there's no conspiracy uh, to prop up Intel. But, you know, we have to be real with ourselves that the moment that any of these reviewers goes rogue and start heavily criticizing Intel, don't be surprised that Intel strike them off their early access list. So while they can speak as truthful as they want, you know, they know that and is very mindful to the fact that losing early access means losing the additional hundreds of thousands or millions of views for those early uh, review videos. It's frustrating to read the online prints and watch you know, these large YouTube influencers fail to call out Intel. So here's some things that I would like them to call out Intel more. So thanks to AMD, Intel is now releasing a competitive CPU that is more than 8 core and it's affordable to the general masses. Uh, you know, CPU like 8700K is a good start. Uh, you know, Core i9 is a good start, but get the prices down. So stuff like that. If it wasn't for Ryzen and Threadripper, we would never have seen those product. Not this year, maybe, maybe later 2018. Another thing that I would like to see them call out uh, Intel on is that the 8700K, it's a new CPU that was released recently. So does Intel expect people to believe that the 8700K is a new CPU that was designed to, com uh, to compete with Ryzen? Now, if you believe that is true, then you may have a blue filters uh, you know, on you. CPU design takes a long time. Even for a company like Intel, it takes some time to design and then to test out those design theories. The 8700K was an already finished product that Intel was withholding so they could continue selling the uh, 6900K and milk the 7700K sales for as long as it can. And when the sales probably tapered off for uh, those product Intel would release the 8700K. Yay, innovation. Now that's some bullshit. That alone right there is sometimes where in Intel gets praised for innovating quickly, getting a new product out in for the, uh, the consumers. But that is some bullshit. They know that they had this product on the shelf waiting for when it was time to release another CPU. And unfortunately for Intel, they was not expecting AMD to be so aggressive with the core counts. Now, another thing that Intel needs to be called out on is, you know, the fact that customers with a 7700K CPU cannot upgrade to the 8700K due to the fact that it requires a whole new motherboard. Now, this f uh, goes back to what I was saying before in that the 8700K was an unexpected uh, release by Intel. Uh, Intel needed something to respond to Ryzen and so this product was sitting on the shelf waiting for say late 2018 or maybe a 2019 release with a slew of new motherboard designs but because Ryzen and Threadripper it forced Intel's hand and so it was a product that was not intended to be released early. Now these are just some of the few uh, bullshit moves that Intel has done to lock customer out of new technology or force customers to pay up if they wanted to use these new technologies. Remember back in the day when Intel would sell these upgrade cards? Uh, they looked like, you know, like uh, gift cards. Now these codes would, uh, you know, you would enter in your computer and it would unlock the features of your CPU. Listen to what I'm saying. The CPU that you bought has the features already on it. It was already um, you know the physical wiring are, are already there it is artificially locked so that you can uh, pay to unlock it how's that for money grab in the world of CPU and PC hardware Intel gets so much leeway with reviewers a good majority of the public will never know some of the more egregious uh, business decision and if they look for reviews on this stuff they, and read from the supposedly trusted sources you know they would get see that Intel is doing great their CPU is the performance leader and they're constantly innovating 
I guess that's what early access will buy you, a lot of good publicity and financial benefits in terms of early product reviews. By this point, you're wondering which reviewer could I be talking about. There's no one specific. I'll leave some uh, links to some of the ones that I think are pretty bad in terms of that, uh, the early access stuff and trying to be, uh, you know, I guess a PC with Intel in the uh, description down below. But, you know, in general, it's all of them that have early access. It's the folks that have reviews up on day one uh, when it's available for sale uh, for the general public to buy. Those are the guys with the early access. There's one person that I do have to give half a credit to, and that's Linus from Linus Tech Tip. Uh, his now infamous rant against Intel's uh, Core i9 and the X299 platform. Let's just say it was uh, epic, you know, takedown of uh, Intel in the platform. But notice how I said, uh, you know, he gets half a credit. It was revealed later that Intel had a talking to Linus about the video. And to his words, you know, in his words, he says, all issues are now resolved. You can read into that however you want. I want to be clear, though. I think these reviewers are doing a great job in terms of presenting the actual benchmark and the results. Uh, those are pretty much unbiased. It's the other things like their opinions and their commentary on the on the uh, product. Those are the ones that you know where you can tell there's an in, Intel's uh, massive shadow looming over it. I think I'll end the video here. Um, you know, basically, I just want to see a more honest take on some of the Intel's commentary. I would like to see more reviewers, more influencers go rogue for the public good. Anyways, what do you guys think of some of the reviewers' perceived easiness on Intel? Uh, do you feel the same way when you watch these videos uh, and reviews? Is it me, or you know, are you seeing the same thing in terms of them failing to criticize Intel? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, please hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.